Okay, so the key idea of this chapter is just to give you a very, very brief and quick wrap up about what has happened in the course so far in terms of the Kalman filter and all its friends and kind of put things a little bit into context. So I started to tell you that um, there are you know, three main paradigms to address the slang problem. The one is a Kalman filter and its friends, the second one is a particle filter, and the third one are the graph based approaches. So far, if we look at the first part of the Kalman filters, Kalman filter and its friends, let's say that way. And the next thing we'll start today with is a particle filter, and then in the end, also move towards the graph based approaches. Um, so we looked at the common filter so far and looked into different aspects. We have seen the common filter, the extended common filter, the unsented common filter, the extended information filter, and the sparse extended information filter, which is kind of, they, are, they actually can extend that furthermore, so they are much more variants of the common filter, but these are the key ones which have been used for addressing the SLAM problem. So if you look to the very basic Kalman filter algorithm, so most of those filters work in, in this way, we have basically the prediction step and the correction step. And if we operate in the moment form, that means we're using the mean and the covariance matrix, then the prediction step is typically easy to compute, and the update step is more difficult to compute. So this was the pure vanilla Kalman filter. And one of the main things was that it was assuming the linear transformation over here for the motion update and the um, linear update here for the measurement function. So it's assumed to have the linear uh, motion and the linear measurement model, which is to be not the case in reality. So we have to move from this completely linear world to a nonlinear world. And this nonlinear non world, or no, we actually live in a nonlinear world, so we have to bring our algorithm towards this nonlinear world, which would be the better expression for that. Um, and this was done by introducing this nonlinear function g for the motion, then this nonlinear function <coughs> h for the observations, um, and take that into account. However, if I do that, I can, for example, propagate the mean, or I can compute the predicted measurement of that, but um, I still need to take that into account to when I'm manipulating my for example, um, covariance matrix in the update steps. And the nonlinear functions, if you propagate a Gaussian through nonlinear functions, you in general end up with not having a Gaussian anymore. So what the EKF does, it actually requires linearizing this nonlinear linear function and then propagating the Gaussian through that linearized function. And this led to the EKF. Of course, this is an approximation error you do. But it's kind of the standard way for dealing with nonlinearities. Linearize your function and propagate your uncertainty through that linearized version. And this resulted in the EKF, the extended Kalman filter algorithm. So you can see the EKF as an extension to the Kalman filter. That is one approach to, well, the most straightforward approach to deal with the nonlinearities that are involved in the measurement function and in the motion function. Um, and it actually turns out that this works quite well if either your nonlinearities are not too severe or your uncertainty is very small. Because if you have a quite strong nonlinearities and a very large uncertainty, then by propagating this large uncertainty through this linearized function, you make bigger approximation errors um, compared to cases where you have very small uncertainty. And the complexity is more or less cubic in the um, dimensionality of the measurement and quadratic in the number of landmarks or features you have in the environment or variables you estimate. And so um, that actually helps you to, in sort of the SLAM context, this is dominated by the number of landmarks um, because you have kind of very low dimensional local observations. So if you do the SLAM, you typically have a mean vector which consists of the robot's pulse, x, y, theta and positions of landmarks, and a corresponding covariance matrix, which you can group into kind of four blocks. So the covariance of the um, landmarks, the robots, poles, and the cross correlations over here. And if you apply an EKF SLAM, and so the robot starts here, observe these landmarks, get this information over here. While the robot continues to move through the environment, sees new features, you see that this um, information matrix gets, uh, all features get correlated, you end up with this checkerboard-like pattern that means all x locations are correlated and all y locations are correlated. And so in the limit, um, it has been shown that the landmark estimates simply get fully correlated. So if you fix one landmark, you basically know where all the other landmarks are. So 
So the EKF SLAM um, is basically applying the EKF in the context of a SLAM problem. It has a uh, um, cubic complexity only on the measurement dimensionality. Therefore, as I said, it is quadratic, or the, the, the limiting factor here is the quadratic complexity in the number of landmarks. And it also needs a quadratic memory complexity because you need to store the covariance matrix. Okay, so the EKF is kind of the first thing you can do with straightforward solution. It works well as long as your nonlinearities non are not too bad. And um, it also becomes typically intractable if the size of the environment or the number of landmarks you have to maintain grows and grows and grows. At some point in time, the quadratic complexity kind of kills you. Okay, the, addressing one of those points, the um, linearization was addressed by the unscented Kalman filter. So the Kalman filter required linear models, the extended Kalman filter did a linearization um, via Taylor expansion. And so the question was, is there a better mean for, do, for doing this approximation instead of the Taylor approximation? And one way to do this is so-called unscented transform, which is then led to the unscented Kalman filter. The key idea here of the unscented um, transform was, instead of just doing the Taylor approximation as the EKF does, they take the mean as a linearization point, linearize the function, uh, function and then come up with a new estimate of the of the, the Gaussian by just transferring the uh, transforming the um, covariance matrix through that linear function was done by computing so-called sigma points, so a subset of those points that are shown here at these dots, and then moving these sigma points through the nonlinear function, computing a weight for them, and then reconstructing the Gaussian based on these set of weight points. And this typically provides a better um, approximation of the, um, of the Gaussian distribution um, propagated or moved, transformed under this nonlinear function. So if you compare the UKF to the EKF, um, they give the same results in linear models. Um, the um, EKF, UKF is typically a better approximation of um, Better approximations sort of works better if you have nonlinear models compared to the EKF. Um, often it is reported that the difference is often somewhat small. So often it doesn't make a really, really big difference. The um, advantage of the UKF is that no Jacobians are needed. Um, it's the same complexity glass, so in terms of the complexity itself, nothing changes, although the UKF is slightly slower. And you need to make sure sometimes you can also end up with numerical issues when using these unsettled transforms, especially if you have some dimensions which are close to infinity in terms of this uncertainty. Um, this was something we need to take care of in the UK. Okay, so this was kind of one of the approach for dealing with, better dealing with this non-linearities. Um, then we looked into the um, extended information filter, which is just a variant of the extended carbon filter, except that it doesn't work in the moment form, that means it doesn't use the mean and the covariance matrix to do the filtering, but it works in so-called canonical form where they have an information vector and an information matrix. And these are both, both complete representations of the Gaussian, so I can do the filtering in one or the other representation. The important thing is that moving between one and the other operation is, um, is actually costly. So this is something we typically don't want because it requires us to invert the information matrix. So the extended information filter is the extended common filter just in information form, um, but it both actually have the same expressiveness. So what you can do with the common filter, you can also do with the extended information filter, and the other way around, except perhaps of some numerical issues which may occur, which depend on the problem you are actually addressing, they should provide you with the same um, estimates or with the same quality of estimates you obtain. Um, the, the main, so the, the overall complexity is similar or the same. Um, the thing is that the, the Kalman filter or the extended Kalman filter has an efficient prediction and a slow um, correction or measurement update step, whereas it's typically the other way around for the information filter where you have a slow prediction and an effective measurement update step. And so the application that you have determines your filter which you're actually using. Um, if you look to the slam problem, the prediction step can actually be done 
due to the separation of the robot's motion and the light marks in a more efficient way. So often the EKF is a better choice than the EIF. And this is often, if you look to a practical applications of the extended karma filter in contrast to the extended information filter, the extended karma filter is much, much more popular than the EIF. However, the EIF is one step which uh, towards the sports extended information filter, what we covered last week and today. So the key idea was if you look to the, in, to the covariance matrix, the inverse of the covariance matrix, the information matrix, you can see that this is a, you can typically approximate that without too many approximation errors with the sparse matrix. So we have, these off diagonal elements are really zero, not only close to zero as they are in reality. This was done by maintaining only a limited number of um, sort of active light marks, as we discussed earlier today, um, between the robot and these active light marks. And you, while the robot is moving through the environment, the set of active light mark, marks changes. In the end, you do the full update only with the robot's pulse and those active landmarks. And as soon as a landmark becomes passive, from active to passive, the sparsification step um, elim eliminates the direct links between the robot's pulse and those features or landmarks which become passive. And this um, results then in a sparse information matrix. It did four steps motion update, the update of this data estimate, just what is approximate approximation when computing the mean, the measurement update, and the sparsification. And if you compare the slide then to the EKF slam, um, it is a slide, is an approximation of the extended information filter. Um, it neglects direct links by sparsification. It's a constant time um, update and is a linear memory complexity, but the quality is inferior. That's what we actually did before. So, um, what we did so far is we used, we looked into different ways to um, Gaussian, so called Gaussian filtering, because everything was assumed to be Gaussian distribution over here. And the different variants of the Kalman filter, extended Kalman filter, UKF, and so on, were different ways for um, dealing with the nonlinearities, which we have in the motion and the measurements. And um, but they all suffer kind of from the complexity issue, and Scythe was one approximation in order to achieve a constant time update step at every point in time. But the main restriction of all these things is that they actually require a Gaussian distribution. And it was kind of the key limit of these filters. I hope that was kind of a quick, rough summary. And um, my goal is now to switch to the um, Particle filters. Oh, yes, sorry. Um, <coughs> is it possible to combine um, the idea of this uncentered filter with this sparse? Uh, yeah. I did, yeah. So, what you can do is you can, there are variants of the uncentered information filter. So far, there has been no word, as far as I know, which combines the sparse extended information filter with that one. Um, but there should be actually no reason why that shouldn't work. So, should be probably be able to do that. Yeah. Okay, just restart that.